Hi everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about 10 lesser known books that I want to read. So these are a few underrated, underhyped kind of books that are on my TBR and that I want to read. I checked on Goodreads. Almost all of them, except for one, received under 5,000 ratings. So that's a pretty small number for Goodreads. That's why I call them underrated and underhyped, even though some of them are by a well-known author. So with no further ado, let's begin. The first book by a, an author from Morocco, A Palace in the Old Village by Tahar Benjelon. This book sounds so heartwarming. I feel like it's going to be very warm. <laughs> something very kind, something that I love. So in this book we follow an elderly man. For a very long time he has been living and working in Paris, in France. But now when he is already about to retire, he suddenly kind of discovers his attachment and the fact that he really misses his country. He feels very much connected to his religion and he decides to return. He returns to Morocco and he spends all his life's savings to build a very big house in a very small, very far away remote village in Morocco. I forgot to say that he also has children. So obviously he is very much attached to his family as well. But his children are already already assimilated to this European culture and obviously they aren't very much connected to Moroccan culture anymore. That's why he returns to Morocco alone. But he builds this, this big house in this faraway village in hopes that one day his children and his grandchildren will come to him and they will live together. And oh my god, this just makes me so... I don't know, it, this premise makes me very emotional. <laughs> I almost cry when I even read the premise. <laughs> oh, because he is waiting for his children and they... I don't know, it, this premise makes me... <sighs> it feels very bittersweet, you know? So I feel like it's going... And look at this picture, he is sitting alone waiting. <sighs> I don't know. This book makes me very emotional, even ju just the premise of it. <laughs> so this is um, one of the underhyped books which I haven't seen anybody talk about. So that's why I thought I would make this video and share some of these books with you. Okay, so the next book is one of the more popular ones. You might have seen it already, maybe on Instagram or maybe even on booktube. I know that um, Peru's project, Reagan, Reagan from Peru's project talked about this book because I learned about this book from her and it sounded just so interesting so I decided to get it. And this is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. So on Goodreads this book has like 9,000 something reviews, so not even 10,000. But it's a new release, so that's why I guess it's more popular. But I still don't see, I think except for Peru's project I haven't seen anybody talk about this book, so Sounds very interesting. So this is Victorian London, London 1863. And we follow the best female detective of her age. That's what the blurb says. And she is tasked with finding a stolen child. And so in her searches of this stolen child, she must enter the dark world of medical curiosities. The public of London loves spectacles and the child that she's looking for might even prove to be the best spectacle of all. Victorian London, female detective, kidnapping, interesting. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, so it's detective story. I, I want, not like I want to try to get more into detective, I just want to explore a little bit more genres and find some just more interesting books. It and just this sounded very atmospheric, you know? very atmospheric, maybe a little bit spooky, maybe like perfect for October. Next book also sounds actually a little bit spooky. Just listen what Neil Gaiman says about it. So Neil Gaiman says, the single most beautiful and unjustifiably forgotten novel of the 20th 
century. Neil Gaiman sold this book to me. <laughs> this is Lodge in the Mist. But it has been on my cheaper for so long, like a year. I think it, I think, I, yes, a year. It has been on my cheaper for a year. I bought it last year for Spookathon. Spookathon, the readathon conducted by Kayla from Lala, Books with Lala. I bought it for that and I still haven't read it. <laughs> Maybe I read it. No, this October will be busy. I mean, maybe November. <laughs> but it, it really sounds very interesting. It really does. It's just that I need to stop buying books. I need to stop buying books and read the book that I already have. So, Blood in the Mist. So, this book is also, I think it has a little bit of magical realism because we follow this town. It's called Lot. And people in this town, they kind of a little bit maybe sound like uh, Mr. Gredgrind from Hard Times, uh, because they don't believe in anything that you cannot see, anything that you cannot touch. So they believe only in, only in facts, in science, in, in like, you know, this real material things. So they don't believe in any fancies, in, in any legends, in anything like that. And so the, this town lot is built on the intersection, is it called intersection of two rivers? Situated where two rivers meet. So it's just, it's built in between two rivers. And one of the rivers flows from the land of fairies. We follow this one man. His name is Nathaniel. He is a dreamy, melancholy man. And he deliberately ignores a vital part of his own past, a secret. He refuses even to acknowledge. But then his daughter disappears and he just has to face the facts because he also has a son whom he needs to protect so apparently this book is very atmospheric also dark maybe a little bit spooky so another person i don't know who she is maybe another author mary gentle she's she says a shakespearean tragic comedy a murder mystery and a multifaceted allegory all in one and a damn good story too and I still haven't read it after one year. <laughs> I really need to. I need to concentrate. I need to concentrate. <laughs> okay, so the next book is by a Japanese author and it's a Japanese book. So this is The Forest of Wool and Steel by Natsu Miyashita. This book on Goodreads has only like 800 reviews, not reviews, 800 ratings. So you see, not many read people have read it. And this book also sounds like something, something good, you know, <laughs> because we follow a young boy, he's in school, he lives in this small Japanese village, Tanya and her villages, <laughs> yes, I like books about villages, <laughs> so he lives in a Japanese village this time, and one time when he's leaving school, he hears the sound of piano, piano being tuned in his school, and so the sounds transports his soul and him to the forests dark and gleaming that surround his beloved mountain village that surround his beloved mountain village at that moment he becomes determined to discover more and so basically the boy discovers his calling he decides that he wants to tune pianos and so he takes lessons with different teachers. Yeah, so what it says, it says that this warm and mythical story is for the lucky few who have found their calling and for the rest of us who are still looking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you, I will read it. <laughs> yes, sounds so good. Okay, next one is also kind of mysterious, little bit spooky novel from Norway. And this is the Bell in the Lake by Lars Mitty. This is going to be a trilogy from what I understand from the blurb. This is also a historical novel. We follow another village. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but yes, these books are about villages. <laughs> oh my god, I only now I understood that like how many books? Already four books are about small towns or villages. I just now realized. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, this is Norwegian village. <laughs> and in this village, uh, there is this young girl. I forgot her name. Young girl. And she doesn't want to live this life. She wants to live a modern life. She wants to live in a big city. She doesn't want 
to live the life of working on soil, having babies, having husband to look after. She wants to live like a modern life. A priest comes to this village, so it's like he was posted to work in that village, in the old church that is built there. And actually the church has a legend to it, because there is these two bells on the church. And they were forged by the girl's grand, grand, grand somebody in memory of his two sons who were born as conjoined twins. And so he created these two wells in memory of them. And now the legend of the, of the village is that these bells sometimes ring by themselves. And when they do that, it means that something terrible or something bad is about to happen. So that's the legend. However, when the priest comes to, to this village, he has a plan for the church. It's not said what, what type of plan he has, but I just, you know, I guess maybe some kind of renovation. <laughs> maybe he wants to change, maybe rebuild the church because he invites an architect from Germany. And, and so our girl, because she wants to leave the village, she sees her escape in these two men. It's either priest or the German architect, like whom she has to marry. But there, there is also, there will be some mystery, because uh, on the back it says, a mystery that fits together like a piece of fine machinery. And it, it also became a bestseller in Norway. So, very interesting looking forward to reading. Next book is also by a very well-known author, I, th I think she's quite well, maybe not very well-known, but she's quite well-known author, I guess. So this is Sylvia Townsend Warner, and the book is The Corner That Held Them. This book also sounds very interesting. It's not set in the village, but it is set in a convent. <laughs> and we follow just, I guess, life of convent of the 14th century. So the blurb says that in 14th century becoming a nun was not actually a matter of calling, it was a matter of business. And that's why it is no surprise <laughs> that the nuns living in this convent are, are prey to worldly ambitions, frustrations, pleasures and jealousies. But then black death happens in the settlement around this convent. And so I guess we will just follow the lives of the nuns in this 14th century along all of these events. So sounds interesting. Books about nuns. I haven't read actually any books about nuns. I read one book about a convent school, which is Frost in May. I liked it. It was really interesting. So now this is going to be my second book about, you know, convents and nuns. <laughs> So very interesting. Next book is described as the gay gone with the wind. <laughs> and so this is uh, like people in history by Felice Picano, American author. And in this book we follow, we follow two second cousins who their whole life they were, they have been friends since like, since the time when they were like 10 and first time met. And both of them are gay. You know, life kind of brings them together, but then pulls them apart, and again brings them together and pulls them apart. But then they meet this poet, an artist, and like, you know, this creative person with whom both of them fall in love. Their complex and tumultuous relationship starts. And so the blurb described it as Felice Picano Chronicles and celebrates gay life and subculture over the last half of the 20th century. Sounds very interesting also. And just the description, the gay gone with the wind. <laughs> I also have had it on my um, TBR for quite a long time already. Uh, the thing that worries me is that it's a little bit chunky, it's like 500 pages, and the font is very small. So, it's okay, one day I will really need to read that. I feel like it's going to be very good. Next book, actually next few books, are recent additions to my collection. So, we will start with The Prince by Hushan Galshiri, Iranian writer, Iranian book. And in this book we follow also very interesting and also kind of reminiscent, a little bit reminds me of The Blind Owl by Sadeh Hidayat. 
So the prince. We follow a prince. <laughs> But he belongs to, to a deposed dynasty. Since he's not a prince anymore, he lives in this small, dilapidated house. And he's kind of delirious a little bit, because he lives in this house surrounded by portraits of all his great family, of all his fathers and ancestors who were kings. And so he sees these visions of like these people stepping down from their portraits and starting like making fun at him and tormenting him. One of the people who like does it the most is his wife. And so as his life unravels, the prince is trying to kind of console himself. I don't really know if he's actually like mentally sick or is it just like his dreams? maybe some daydreams, I'm not sure. So it sounds like something a little bit maybe like psychological story, psychological novel, and I enjoy those stories. Next book is also very short, and this is also new. So this is The Day the Leader Was Killed by, by Nagib Mahfuz. This is a historical novella set in 1981 when Anwar al-Sadat was the president of, of Egypt. And we follow a life of a family, and the story is told either person from the family. So there will be a father, there will be a daughter, and a son. And so the novel reaches its climax in, in October 6, 1981, when the president Sadat was assassinated. And so we just see the life of family evolving around these events. This is the story of all people who must face the pangs of development while struggling to hold on to tradition. And the last book I wanted to show you today is The Fire of Origin. I mean, it's very beautiful, look at it. I really like the color. So in this novel, we follow development of the history of the African continent. And the whole history in this book is united by the actions and life of this one person. His name is Monkunku, which translates as destroyer, the way description puts it. He was born in mysterious circumstances. He was born away from his village, which makes him like half human, I guess, in, tradi in the tradition and culture of the place. He was born in banana fields. And so through the events of his life, we follow story of the continent. And we see such events as pre-colonial era, and then horrors of European subjugation, and then to independence and the complexities of the post-colonial nation. And so it describes it as mythical, lyrical, powerful and surreal. It's one of the most ambitious works of fiction to come out sub sub-Saharian Africa. They will be able to learn something about history of the African continent. Great. Okay, so there you have it, guys. 10 underrated books on my TBR. 10 lesser known novels that I want to read. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found maybe also some interesting books for yourself to explore. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books. Maybe you have already read some of them, if you enjoyed them. Maybe you read some other books by these authors, also let me know. Let me know what underrated books you enjoyed and what underrated books you would recommend to me to explore. I am always very grateful for all of your recommendations. And for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a very good day, staying safe, and I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you very much. Bye.